from Boss Track, It's Her Hype Squad, a show about amazing women who've made incredible strides as leaders in their industry. They're here to support you in your leadership growth, to encourage you and hype you up as part of your Hype Squad. Hello, and welcome back to a new episode of Her Hype Squad with Boss Track. I'm your host, Michelle Harris. This week, I talk with Mai Moore about social impact, the power of connecting, embracing innovation and ideas of Gen Z, and facing your fears. Mai is so passionate about supporting women and young people, and she has so much great experience and advice to share. But before we get into the conversation, let me tell you a little bit about Mai. Mai Moore is an award-winning social impact leader, co-founder of EYEJ, Empowering Youth Exploring Justice, founder of Setting Off Social Impact and Boss Me In. Mai helped two tech startups go public, Travel Zoo Inc. and United Online. She believes in diverse women, BIPOC persons, and our young people to help create a more equitable and inclusive world. Mai is from Cleveland Heights, Ohio. If you enjoy my conversation with Mai, be sure to subscribe to our channel and help more people find us by sharing this episode with others or by leaving a review. Our, or subscribe to our weekly newsletter filled with things we found that we're excited about and were inspired by, along with valuable leadership advice to watch, listen to, or read. It's a little bit of joy for your inbox each Monday. You can subscribe at thebosstrack.com forward slash weekly joy. Now let's get into my conversation with Mai Moore. Hi, Mai. Thank you so much for joining us here on Her Hype Squad with Boss Track. We're so happy to have you here today. Well, thanks so much, Michelle. Thanks for having me. I'm happy to be here as well. I'm really excited to get into our conversation. I want to, I'm really ready to learn all about what you, what we're going to be talking about today. But I'd love to start out with you just introducing yourself to, to the audience. Sure. Um, I am a human and a social impact leader here to create a more equitable and inclusive world. And I have, you know, a lot of different experience, 16 years in tech, um, nine and a half years as a founder to a uh, social impact nonprofit, empowering young advocates for change, serving 2,000 underserved youth and working with 1,400 adult, very diverse adult persons moving EYEJ forward. And then um, most recently, about two weeks ago, or two months ago, excuse me, launched Boss Me In, which is a social impact corporation, really about the future of work, empowering diverse executive women and, and Gen Z. Perfect. That's what I was going to ask you to to talk a little bit about Boss Me In, because I know that that's very relevant to our conversation, because I know you're targeting one of the generations you're typically, or what you're specifically targeting is Gen Z. Mm -hmm. um, Boss Me In is very special. Just to give a little background, I had joined Chief, the, the world's largest executive women network, I think it was last January. And knew that I wanted to leave EYEJ, not because of the people, but I was extremely burnt out. And I knew I wanted to do bigger social impact. I didn't know exactly what that was. And I thought I was just going to get another, you know, a corporation job or something like that, go back to the corporate world. But I was really paying attention to what was happening in culture and with executive women. And a lot of women were really saying, hey, we want to empower young women. And I also, I have a 19-year-old BIPOC daughter who's been through a lot. And of course, with EYJ, I've worked with hundreds and hundreds of young women. So, um, you know, I, it was just really up my alley. And uh, last August, created a coalition called the Speaker Series for Young Women through Chief. And Lucy Chen, which is one of the members of the coalition, there's 35 very diverse women that are part of this coalition, said, hey, you know, let's create a speaker series. So I helped her with like the design of it because I have experience with those kind of events. I've won Anthem Awards through EYEJ. And so she was really in charge of that and conducted, really did amazing work with a lot of the members of the coalition. And really the idea of the speaker series is really to empower the storytelling and authentic leadership of executive women, right? Because a lot of times in society, we're not really hearing um, this kind of authenticity. And this is what Gen Z and young people really desire and demand is they're really tired of us adults, right? You know, talking so much and giving empty promises. They want to hear truth. They want to hear storytelling. They want to hear like 
what did you really go through to get to the C-suite? Because a lot of times we're setting up young people for failure, right? Because we have painted this picture as women that you go from A to Z and it's like this straight path, which is very, very untrue. Um, so anyway, we had, uh, we tested that out and I think they did six events with over, I think 24 speakers and moderators. We have a very specific custom design and through that process in the back end, I wanted to create a business. I'm a serial entrepreneur. I've been part of a lot of startups. I've helped two companies go IPO. I obviously started EYEJ, which is uh, a nonprofit. And I just, I, that's my creativity. I love, I'm a builder and I love social impact. So I was dabbling and I was talking to hundreds of these women and I was, you know, li really listening to all the gripes, right? Pay equity issues, DEI issues, equity issues, burnout issues, mm -hmm. uh, you know, not enough seats in the corporate or executive table. So it just goes on and on and on. And I have experienced that with that myself, where there's one slot, you know, one executive spot for, for a female or a minority, and you're fighting so hard. And, you know, even women against women or minority against minority to get that one spot. And I think everyone is tired of that. Everyone's mm -hmm. tired of that. It's really BS to be honest. And so anyway, um, dabbled and I said, what are we going to do? Are we going to create a nonprofit here? And I said, no way I'm not doing a nonprofit. But then I was like, you know what, why don't we take this speaker series directly to the Gen Z, to the young people and go to the universities where they're at. So that's really the basis and kind of, um, kind of primary product of boss me in is, we are just simply a service-based company that is selling these customized speaker series panel to universities, to nonprofits or corporations getting corporate sponsorships um, where we can conduct these events, but then after have a more intimate conversation with the young people to build relationships, to connect, to do mentoring, whatever it is, whatever the young person's looking for, internships, jobs, because really Boss Me In is about the future of work. And as we know, the future of work is in shambles right now, super complicated. No one has the answer. Everyone's trying to figure it out. And uh, we have to figure it out because we have no choice. I mean, that's what, you know, really runs our economy. And we're not preparing Gen Z properly. We're not pre preparing them for the pathway or guiding them or supporting them, especially uh, females to get to the C-suite. We're not being honest and we're not, um, you know, we don't, we're not holding their hand. Cause I know when I was that age, I definitely didn't have any kind of mentor or someone to guide me and say, Hey, this is how you start a business, or this is how you get in the tech industry. Like I had to figure it out all my, my own. And so the world is complicated enough. Right. And so I think mentorship is very important and really meeting Gen Z where they're at, which a lot of times executive women, we don't do that. Well, we, we are not. Um, and in the magic sauce, I was just on a, on a call with a head of future work with the Fortune 500 company, we were talking about how hard it is for intergenerational kind of connection within companies. And I think that's been one of my fortes, whether, you know, with EYEJ um, and at Boss Me, and you'll see that as well, is really the power of us connecting because women are truly the most powerful force. And if we can learn, you know, we need each other you know, older and younger. And so if we can learn to connect, if we can learn to listen to each other, respect each other, we're unstoppable. Yeah. Well, you hit on so many topics that we could have so many conversations about. And I, I love that we're so aligned. I mean, in, in terms of like what we're doing with Boss Track and this podcast is really reaching out to those executive women who are, who have been leaders and talking about what are those stories? What did they go through? Uh, what were their challenges? So we can have our audience learn from those. Um, with uh, Jen speak, and I, I, I do want to say, like, I appreciate your passion. <laughs> it, it is definitely coming through. And, you. Um, you know, I, I can tell uh, it's going to be my successful. Job. Yeah. Thank you. I, I'm grateful. I, I really, it's, it's a, it's a passion. I, I, not to say that I don't have bad days and some days I just want to quit. And, of course. but I just, I know this is just one, I, just this morning, this is just my calling. I, I'm here. Social impact is my thing. Helping this world help to create a better world. That's just, who I am, whether I like it or not. <laughs> so yes, thank I you. I love it. And I and I wouldn't have, I guess, that you have a 19 year old. Um, that people say the same thing about me. I know I look older than you for sure, but I have a 31 year old and a 24 year old. So oh, I, yeah, I, I, I know what that's like. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, yes. So going to, back to Gen Z, what what do you think? And you did you did touch on this a little bit in what you talked about in your intro to Boss VN, but what do you think of the specific characteristics or what's unique about Gen Z? What are they looking for that's different in leadership? Oh, that's a big question, um, but I'll break it down for you. I mentioned authentic leadership. They're definitely demanding transparency. They definitely love collectiveness, co- collective thought leadership and collective building. I will say specifically for Bosmian, we have a Gen Z ambassador team and they clearly their mission is that they want a seat at the table, meaning that they want their voice to be heard and not to be only heard, but they want it to be, you know, whatever they're recommending to be implemented and executed on, right? They want to be valued. Um, And so I think the other thing that's really powerful about Gen Z is they don't have any time for BS. They're Mm -hmm. sick of the state of this world. They're sick of having empty promises. They're sick of, you know, because, and what I, what I'm really saying is a lot of time, and I'm talking about myself too, a lot of time as we're getting older, we tend to overcomplicate things. We overthink things, right? And Gen Z are just like, it doesn't have to be so complicated. Like our our mentoring uh, program, you know, I was just talking with Amy, who's the head of the Gen Z ambassador team. And I'm like, let's just cut out all the extraness and like, let's make impact and connect the Gen Z with the the, uh, executive women so that they can build a relationship. Like, why is it so complicated? Right. Mm -hmm. And so we, and that comes from capitalism that comes from a lot of things, but they just, they're just like, we want to help the world. And why does it have to be so extra? Right. Why are, and I think the other thing that they're, they really require is um, ease. I think a lot of us executive women have learned that from them is that they want a more balanced life. Um, yes, they care about society and yes, they want to make, make an impact, but it's not the old way, like my way where, you know, you are working 14 hours a day, killing yourself, burning out while you have responsibility at home, while you're taking care of your kid, whatever it is, Mm -hmm. right. They want to just be more in the moment and in life and embracing life. And because it is an amazing, and actually is an amazing world that we're in and we are amazing people, but we're not acting like it. And so, um, you know, these are just some of the things. I think. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm interested. So I'm sure you've had these conversations. So it's a lot. And it's so different than when you look at the corporate corporate America today, like what conversations are you having with people that are in that corporate world? And, and how do people start really addressing all this? Because it is such a shift from where the corporate world is today. That's a very good question. I mean, it's, it's not as hard as we make it. I think Mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's, it's, if you're, if someone is younger or someone's BIPOC and you invite them to a meeting, a brainstorm meeting, or put them on your board or, you know, um, listen to their input, not just say you're going to listen, but actually listen to what they're saying, like really stop talking and listen and acknowledge and really think about, wait a minute, that idea is actually brilliant. How can we integrate that into our whatever it is, strategic plan or whatever campaign or project that we're working on? So it's it's embracing the innovation and ideas that they have. Because I will tell you, the reason I think that I've been so successful with Gen Z and the way, I don't know why they're attracted to me, is that I really do listen. Mm-hmm. Now, it's tricky because I also have to kind of sometimes be the tough one and lay down the law because there's things that they're still learning, like things like deadlines, they hate deadlines, right? So there's, there's, but it's a balance. It's a, it's a relationship. It's a back and forthness because the truth is Gen Z are really looking to be led. Mm -hmm. Just like they're really, they don't, they may not act like it, but they really are. This is an amazing time in the world where the leaders who can handle this really need to step up to play and companies need to empower those that can really communicate that have that trust and that that connection relationship with gen z because they're important there are now you know everyone says there's our future no no no. there are now right and it's just like think about when we were young it's it's like we have the ideas and fresh perspectives and and but the older people may have the resources or the wisdom or the experience and so it's also gen z's responsibility too to listen to that so it's it's i'm not trying to say that it's a one-way street it's a two-way street Um, but we do what I think where the problem is, there's an imbalance of, 
of right now and a like this control and this this desire for older executives to hold on because they're afraid that they're going to lose their spot or their job or whatever it is that doesn't work we have to be open. we have to be open and embrace and maybe be more confident in ourselves as older executives um to say wait a minute i do have a lot of freaking experience and i have had all these successes and this is the impact i made because we do have all that but we don't we don't celebrate it enough and, and we're, we're torn down a lot of times especially as women oppressed or whatever so I think the, if we're more confident in ourselves, not only will we attract more, um, but Gen Z respect that. They respect that for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I know we've, I've talked to a couple of people over the last few months or year about reverse mentorship, where not only do the older, the older generation provides the mentorship to the younger generation, but the younger generation provides that reverse mentorship to the older generation with like technology and different ways of thinking about things and bringing that diversity into the conversation. But I like what you said about that fear and not, I mean, cause the world is changing fast and yeah. I know a lot of people uh, that are older and they start to see themselves aging and aging yeah, out. And yeah, so I, I, I can definitely see that like what you're saying about having that, that fear of that generation coming in. So interesting. I think, I think this is, by the way, B, BMI is, uh, we're launching a reverse mentoring program. It's funny that you say that, but oh, okay. I, I think that this isn't new, mm-hmm. right? We've all, everyone ages, our parents have age, right? I think that we are just, in my opinion, maybe in a faster type world, our young people are growing up faster, whether it's right or wrong. They have all this social media and overwhelming information and problem solving they have to do on a constant basis with you know things happening in the world or per- personal life or whatever. But it's not new. We've always, people have always had to recreate themselves to stay relevant. Right. I think for us older people, it's hard because we're freaking exhausted. <laughs> and like, you know, how many times have we, especially women, how many times have we had to recreate ourselves or get creative or, you know, and I'm not, I'm not trying to complain, but at the same time, like we got a lot of responsibilities at home going on too. And it's like that there is a pressure. There is definitely a pressure. And, but I do think we have no choice. We're in a new world now and we have to adjust, uh, be flexible, be more open-minded and really get in tune with this new world. And I think it goes again, back to confidence. Like the more we kind of go within ourselves and our desires and our calling and our passion areas, the more that we can succeed in this new world. Yeah. One of the things you mentioned earlier was having that one position that everybody's fighting for because there just isn't enough representation of women Mm -hmm. and minorities in higher positions. Do you see in the conversations you're having or like maybe previous roles where that women are supporting other women more often, or do you think that still exists where people that have reached that position of authority are, are you still kind of feeling like they have to fight for it? Big question. Yeah. Um, I think there's a lot of answers to what you just said. I think one part is women are tired of that. And that's, you see that in the quiet quitting and, mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I can't tell you how many executive women around me are in transition because they are just tired of the BS, right? Yeah. So there's, there's that part of it that they don't want to fight for that one slot. They they already are worth more than that. They And they don't need to prove themselves over and over. I'm talking about myself too, because I've been in that position. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, that's, a, it's a big question question because I don't think that the world is going to change so rapidly it is definitely changing and you know women gen z we're I mean we're putting our foot down right now and that will that's what causes change in the corporate space but then look what's happening is corporate is corporations are now possibly going to replace us with AI and robots, right? Because they're going to want to deal with all this and they're thinking about efficiency and costs and ROI and all that kind of stuff. So um I, I'm hopeful that we're, I, and I, I believe that we're walking in, in, into a new world now. And I believe again, Gen Z are the ones who are creating spaces to say, like, it's not even around, it's not even about the number of slots. It's about like, 
let's come to the table, whoever you are and build mm -hmm. X or create right. Y, you know what I mean? So again, it's not, ha it's not going to happen overnight, but there is drastic shifts happening. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I need that. There's shifts need to happen. I've, you know, I'm sure you've observed it too throughout my career. You're wondering how, how can businesses be successful in the long term, operating the way they're operating? And you can only get so far operating with a short term focus. And so that that sh the shifts all around have needed to happen. I feel like it's all yes. kind of coming to to a head now. And in some ways, in some ways, some ways we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna have to suffer a little bit to get. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's the truth. Yeah, that's how reform and change happens. Yeah, that is so. true. Very true. With technology, is there anything that the listener, our listeners need to think about in terms of what Gen Z wants, uh, how they want to be able to use technology or use technology in their daily lives? I mean, I think that question is really, really for Gen Z to answer, but I, you know, I think content is really big and social media. And I think, you know, I think about my daughter and like when the, first, the iPhone came out and parents grappling like, no, I'm going to keep it away from them as soon as long as I can. And I was like, no, I, I'd like to, you know, in a controlled way, like have her, have my daughter start dabbling in it. I think the point here is, is like, ra rather than push against it, we need to embrace it. So, you know, AI, AI is being talked about everywhere. I'm not, it's interesting though, like with AI, I, you know, I think about the young people at UIJ and my own daughter and the Gen Z ambassador team in BMI, like, it's, I don't, I see them once in a while talking about AI, but it's not as much as I see as the executive women talking about it. So that's, mm -hmm. that's interesting to me. I think young people in my, and again, please ask Gen Z. I am not, <laughs> I'm not a Gen Z. No, 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 of course. Yeah. Them, but um, I, I think social media is still like huge, like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the TikToks and which is, I, again, you got to ask Gen Z. I'm not an expert at <laughs> that, but um it's, it's the way they communicate, um, through the social media. And it's a totally different language than obviously how we grew up with. And I, and it, you know, of course it worries me because I don't feel like young people know how to communicate. Well, I'll be honest, Yeah. the texting and the, let me snap you and you know, whatever let's, I communicate through a, a TikTok video versus having like a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Um, but, but at the same time, What's interesting is Gen Z. I've had some scenarios in the la actually the last couple of weeks that some Gen Z people on my team, they they come to a lot of them come to me one on one and they're saying, "Well, I want my voice to be heard." So it's mm -hmm. like this, it's like a catch twenty two because I'm like, "Okay, speak up!" Like you know, you got to have you got to have courage in there too, and you got to have some guts too. Yeah. But they don't know how to speak up too, so it's this. But then they know how to do a video. <laughs> that, that, they know how to put a video out there so they're speaking up that way but it's like then they feel frustrated they're not being heard but then again it, it's back to it goes on it's on them and it's on us too like we got to learn how to communicate that's mm -hmm. a big problem it's a big problem in our world there's a, it's we're in the world of miscommunication human miscommunication yeah that's we really truly are that causes so many problems and i have seen it with my own eyes about how it impacts businesses how it costs us money how it hurts people how it causes pain we don't know how to communicate yeah that is that's so true everything's comes down to communication like totally <laughs> it, it really and does in marriages yeah mm -hmm. everything we don't know how to communicate so it's like you know everywhere yeah and so then we in communication and trust that's an, oh, that's another thing I was going to say is like, no one trusts anymore, anybody, mm -hmm. I mean, especially, and I'm talking more of like my own experiences. I'm talking about underserved, you know, I serve 2000 underserved people don't trust adults and I cannot blame them. Yeah. I really ethically, and I just cannot sit there and blame them for what has been done to our country and our world. You know, sometimes I'm like, why should young people trust adults? Yeah. You know? That's a big thing too, the trust factor. Yeah. Yeah. That is depressing. There's definitely something I think is so important for leaders to develop is how to, how to build that trust. And I know you're talking about more from a society level, which really does trickle down into work and everything, but it, it's just uh, building that trust is, is important because I mean, you're not going to have the results that you need and it's just going to continue to 
things are going to continue to to mm-hmm. decline without that trust. I think yeah, so important trust yeah. and communication two yeah. pillars we we focus on. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I was going to say something and I don't remember what it was, but uh. Oh, I know what I I was only I was only going to corroborate like having to be flexible with communication with Gen Z or even younger younger um, people on your team because I have somebody on my team that we text and uh, that's the main form of communication and we'll get on a Zoom every now and then just to have FaceTime and and I think that's so important to building building that trust and I have another person that they want to communicate through Slack and everything is done through Slack and approvals mm-hmm. are are done through there and and again we get our FaceTime to to have that relationship. Do you, how, what is your feeling about uh, cameras on, cameras off for Zoom calls? Okay, that's a really good question. And I think about to the EYEJ days, uh, I, I actually don't have generally most of the time meetings where the camera's off. But I think about also to the days of serving youth at EYEJ, because when the pandemic happened, like, you know, switching the programming over to virtual, And sometimes the kids would come on, um, you know, and turn their cameras off. And I would literally ask them politely and respectfully, just ask them to turn their camera on. And, but I would also say there's no judgment. Um, You know, Mm -hmm. you're whatever you were laying on your bed or whatever the case may be, there's going to be no judgment. It's just about showing up. So interesting. I, 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 I would not you know, of course there are things happening in people's lives. And like, if someone says, you know, blank, blank, my, my camera's not on. I'm, to me, that's being respectful because they're explaining, I, I'm acknowledging that my camera's not on. And this is just the reason why I can't do it right now. I just got out of shower or something. I don't know what the excuse is, but generally I don't have meetings where the camera's off. Yeah. To me, that's not um, respectful. And it's, we're not in the moment. We're not showing up might as well not come to the meeting. I totally agree. I know there are times when you're part of maybe a 50 group meeting that is every week and you're off in the corner and it's like one of those courtesy you're there, but you don't really need to be there. Like those types of meetings, I completely agree. But yeah, when it's something like like your one-on-ones or a weekly team meeting that go through small groups or yeah, I feel like, I feel like and it, and it may be because of my age, but it's just so important. But I, I think like even psychologically, they're going back to that building trust and having um, a relationship and communicating effectively. Like you need to have that. You need to be able to see people's faces. I think you're missing yeah. a whole part of communication when you don't yeah. have that, that, that FaceTime. There's also, there's some cultural, you know, I've experienced where um, certain cultures may ease their way into meetings. And so they may keep their cameras off and then different kind of tactics to me. I'm, I'm not, you know, just, just to make sure that they're being respected. And I'm not really into that either personally for me either. I'm just like, if you don't, if you're, you're, if you don't, I, but I operate differently. If you don't trust yet, or you don't want to be here, like, just don't be here. Just yeah. you know, like come when you can, because it's a, every relationship is a two way street. The person also has to work on building the trust too. It's a relationship. It can't be 90, 10 or 70, 30, you know, we're, yeah. we're, we're meeting each other as humans. So, but that's me personally. Yeah. Yeah, one of the things I was thinking about was you talked about this earlier on in our conversation with DEI. And I know a lot of companies are really trying to implement or putting in a half attempt at implementing DEI. What what are you how do you think that might change over time with Gen Gen Z, their generation? So there's a there's a whole um shift happening in the world, right? With affirmative action and all these initiatives around DEI um, layoffs, you know, DEI sometimes being the first departments to get cut. It just goes on and on. And so it's very heartbreaking. It's very painful for people who've been working on this so hard and already had so many limited resources and budgets in order to create positive change. On the other hand, I think for Gen Z, 
it could be it could be really positive. It could be that DEI is not going to be so siloed and segmented anymore, and that it's really about being human beings and us integrating and just being a human and a person. I, I, again, it's not going to be an overnight thing, but um, I think I think that you know there's change. There's a lot of change happening. And I think we just need to keep on being creative and innovative. And soon it's probably not going to be called DEI anymore. Um, that could happen. And sometimes in, right now in these days, sometimes that's a very faux pas word. And it's just like, you know, I think we need to think about it differently. And I think we need to think about it as humans and people. Um, that's what DEI is really. Yeah, it's really it's really hard because there's all these reasons that the that those programs exist and I guess my fear in having those go away is that all the progress that was made but it is yeah, it wasted or just stalls and then we have to wait for our new generation, you know, hopefully Gen Z or even millennials are coming up with through it with the mindset that that it is that's not even something to think about like it just we're all we yeah. all have we're all diverse we have a different ideas like we have we all have things to bring to the table and that you know it's not it's not an issue but it's the yeah it, I yeah. It, it, it is painful to kind of see what's happening with the supreme court very and painful. things in society yeah it's very painful, but at the same time, it gives a new opportunity if we can look at it that way where, I mean, this is why you're seeing so many people, you know, quitting or building new businesses and or in transition because people want to start creating new types of culture and new types of ways mm -hmm. of doing business. So like I said, we're going to have to suffer for a little bit, but it could, it could turn out really amazing. Yeah, yeah. Well, switching uh, gears a little bit, what do you think are, and, and you know, this might just be a guess, but I don't know if you've had conversations, what kind of professional development do you think people need to be thinking about giving to these new leaders coming up in, in the workplace? That's a big question. I, I like BMI does. I think the reverse mentoring is really important. Um, you know, meeting people where they're at and building a relationship because this world is about connections and relationships. I think that's probably top most uh, crucial, you know, learning how to network or because that leads to so much, right? It could lead to a job or internship, mm -hmm. stuff like that. But then, um, you know, it depends where you're at in your career. Obviously, I, I really believe in Gen Z becoming so skilled and so amazing at whatever that calling or passion is that they become an expert. I think that's really important. So obviously building relationships or finding mentors that are directly in the area of uh, uh, focus of where they want to be. Um, you know, we talked about communication. I think leadership is really important. We need more leaders. And I think not enough leadership training is out there, honestly. Mm -hmm. And if it is, it's, Sometimes it's very archaic. So teaching, you know, teaching the truth of what it really takes to be a leader, because we've painted such a like a glamorous picture, which is sometimes very untrue. Leadership sometimes can be very lonely. And sometimes you got to be the bad guy. And a lot of people don't um, realize, I even have executives, they think, oh, you know what, I can be a CEO, I can be a founder. And then they realize, oh, this is what it takes. So I think more education and more um, explanation of an acknowledgement and respect of when people try to explain what happens through the process versus uh, versus like tearing it down. Because I think that we are such we are such a society that's like, this is the result that I made. And it's only A or, or T when it's A, there's all these steps, it's incremental steps or, you know, these pain yeah. points or things that have happened during the process that were, that's what I think needs to be educated to all of us. So that we can have a more realistic view. Okay, this is what it actually takes. And you know what? That may not be, I, maybe I don't want to be CEO. Maybe mm -hmm. I am going to be, I just want to be head of innovation as an example, right? So, but again, it's not, that's that's training is is being more honest and be more real with with what it takes. Um, um, intergenerate, how to work in intergenerational and uh, collective cultures, I think is important. How to... Um, how to how to have a conversation and disagree on topics, right? How do you comb through that? Uh, we are a 
I don't know what's happening right now. We are terrible at respecting each other's ideas, even if, even if they're, if they're totally opposite. I don't know. I know some of it, why it happened, but we can't even respect somebody who has a different opinion than us now. Mm -hmm. So really that kind of coaching about how to have a conversation, how to have dialogue, I think is very, very important. Um, I could go on and on. (laughs) There's a lot. lot. (laughs) Yeah. It's so interesting. I think social media definitely plays a big part in, you know, especially going back to those expectations of like what it takes to get from A to T and A to T didn't just magically happen, but you know, so many people show that story and I think it just gets promulgated so much that, you know, I think there are unrealistic, unrealistic expectations in a lot of different areas because of that. Yeah. Yeah. I would say one more area too, that we could all learn is more about humble, uh, uh, servant leadership. Yeah. Um, uh, because I, you know, I I'm around a lot of different people and I have seen how the ego harms and it, it really, honestly, some people are very sick from it, men and women. Yeah. And so how do we build a society and culture and corporate culture that says it's okay to be more humble servant leadership versus, Oh, I did this and this and this. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't um, celebrate our wins and successes, but I'm saying that we are all here in this world for a duty, right? And for us is to pass on to the next, you know, generation, whatever it is. Um, So how do we embrace that more in culture? I think that's important. Yeah, totally agree. Totally agree. That one's a big one. It's human nature to, I, I, you know, that's never going to be a 100%, but the more people that we can get to, to have that mentality, I think the better, Yes. you know, the corporate world and world ends up being for sure. I feel like we're so far removed <laughs> from that. And, and I, but I, but I see so many good things like pulling us back, back into it. So hopefully we'll have a movement going, uh, going in that direction and, and there will, there will be hope. hope. <laughs> yeah. With, with mentorship. Yeah, with mentorship, how are you approaching mentorship? Because I know it's not necessarily something that people are always thinking about. I mean, you just get so busy and buried in your day to day. And it's something you really need to be conscious about, you know, your career growth and what do I need? I need my personal board of advisors. And that includes a mentor. Like, how are you approaching mm-hmm. that communication that people need that, that should have should have a mentor? I mean, it's a person's choice. So I, so I've been on both sides, right? I've definitely been a mentee and I've definitely mentored a lot of people of, of honestly, of, of all ages. I think it's a tough one because, and I've worked with all types of young people too. And there's young people that are super driven and focused and know what they want to do. And then there are some young people that don't know what they want to do and that's not a bad thing. Right. So, um, it's that's a big question, but I think it's just a. I think we've overcomplicated. I think it's about, you know, being paired maybe with the right person as far as like interest area or mm-hmm. or whatever profession area. I think that's important. Um, and you know, figuring out other things that maybe a person desires, like maybe someone does desire someone to be a little bit more aware and woke of you know multicultural issues and to really embrace DEI as an example, but, you know, asking those questions so that then you can pair for the right person and then they can develop their relationship. I think that we, again, overcomplicate things and we we need to not control so much and leave it up to these two people to, mm-hmm. um, and, and of course there needs to be like check-ins, you know, of course, and you know, it's hard because I think, you know, a lot of corporations or nonprofits have to collect, you know, outcomes and impact data, which is understandable. Um, but there are ways to integrate that through the process that doesn't have to be so overcomplicated. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think the hardest part about mentorship is the longevity and continuity of that relationship because the world has changed so much because people are so busy. And so exactly what you said is, really making maybe a mandate that there is a commitment to this. There is, um, you do need to carve some part of your schedule out for this. And it doesn't have to be like an everyday thing, but maybe Mm -hmm. it's once a week or maybe it's just once a month. Maybe that's 
you know, but I think that again, that's a communication between both parties too. And ho- hopefully a third party that can help create that as well. Yeah, I really, I really do like that. I'm hearing more and more uh, about companies that are um, promoting mentorship and starting mentorship programs within the organization. Um, the only limitation I think sometimes with that is a lot of times it's like within the organization. So you're being paired up with somebody that is working there. So you're not getting any kind of outside perspective, but it's, it's, a, it's definitely a great start. And, 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 and what you said about the long-term and the longevity, I think you are going to ultimately not always, but sometimes grow out of your current mentor and be looking for the next mentor, depending on where you're at in your career. A, like anything in life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Some relationships are long-term, some are just for a season and that's normal. And I think if we understood that more, I mean, that, yes, that's great. Yeah. Now, do you have a, is there a mentor that you can look back to that made a difference in your career? Um, Career, I don't know about career because I'm pretty unique, but I would say I've definitely had a lot of mentors. I am very attracted to older people that have a lot of experience and a lot of wisdom. Um, and I think about like my EYEJ day, days. I mean, I, I must've had like at least seven maybe eight mentors and they're all, you know, 65. So actually one gentleman was close to 90 years old, because I think when you're working with young people and you're working with people and culture, like I, I needed that kind of wisdom, but I'm not that I'm not saying that that's right for everybody. Um, but I really appreciate, I would say other than the male Dick, uh, Mickle is his name, but other than the male, it was all women. And I've always been very attracted to very strong women um, and I needed that. I needed that because I mean, that's the type of person I am. And again, I'm not saying that that's for everybody, but I've been very blessed that way. Um, just, and I, it's interesting how it's happened for me. I, again, I'm not normal. I wouldn't say I'm normal because I it just, people come to me. Like I have so many people come to me for different things. And I've been very blessed that when I think that's just because I've been in social impact space. And when you're making impact, people will naturally come to you. So how did you find the mentors that you had? You just kind of naturally came up in in your life and you just decided that you wanted to continue to reach out to them for different reasons? For me, some started through my church and then I started doing the work of the EYEJ and then pe- just leaders in the industry. And then people would refer people to me. Yeah. That's, that's been my case. Mm-hmm. Again, I'm, I'm, um, you know, I, I think the, the thing to note here is I think that you can never have enough mentors Yeah, because there are different aspects of your life that you're working on or trying to improve or grow in or you're running a business or, you know, whatever the case is. So I think you can have mentors in all areas of your life, whether it's uh, about mothering or whether it's about business. So I think we shouldn't have, we shouldn't be so limited um, to say like, I only need one mentor and this and this and this, like things change, things evolve, you get new interests, you get new passions. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so I think we just need to be open. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's so true. I'm glad you brought up Glad you brought up that point because uh, it's a uh, it's it's totally valid and, and good point. I'd like to switch. I know we have only have a little bit of time. I'd like to switch over to some a different line of questions away from uh, <laughs> Gen Z and mentoring. I'm wondering, do you have a daily routine that you do that you feel attributes to your over overall well being? Yes. Luckily, I went to Bali. Last September, I spent uh, three weeks there and I met with a couple energy healers because I'm really into self-awareness and growth. I'm constantly like working on myself. And I think you have to do that as a leader when you're in the social impact space, um, just to keep your mind clear and healthy. But um, one energy healer taught me. So every day I do an exercise when I get up that is giving thanks to God is really clearing my chakras and also getting kind of nonsense out of my mind because I'm an overthinker. So it's an exercise to address those three things that I do every day. Where did you stay in Bali? Oh, I went to like seven different areas. Oh, wow. So yeah, yeah, I went all over. I loved it. (laughs) 
Yeah, we were there. We were there a few weeks ago, but we only spent a few days. We were on like a little Southeast Asia tour. And it was one of our oh, stops. Wow. Where did <laughs> you we, go? We loved it. I forget the name of the town. I had a feeling you're going to ask me that. And I can't think of what did it was. You go to Ubud? It wasn't too far away from the airport. It was maybe like a 45 oh. minute drive from the airport. So it was down on the like Southeast. East uh, Samanayak or something or something yes. like that. Semenyak, Semenyak. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's Semenyak. that's exactly yeah. where it was. Yeah, yeah, very cool. Yeah, we were yes. all over the place, and uh, the be- the rice fields were beautiful. I mean, it was just a it was a such a beautiful place. I mean, the traffic was crazy, yeah. but <laughs> yeah. it's very it's a very spiritual place, very deep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially yeah, when yeah. you go like up into Sidamen, like you can feel the spirit, like how thick this uh, spiritual this is yeah so I'm, I'm looking forward to going back and spending some more time so I might have to reach out to you when <laughs> when we're ready to do that <laughs> do you have a song that you like is your go-to song when you need a little confidence or energy boost um yes I there's a song called get up get out by born dirty and it's just a powerful song to turn up really loud when you need to just change your mind frame and you need to just get energized for life. I would say that's definitely my go-to. Oh, interesting. I haven't heard that song. So I'm going to have to find that on, I'm assuming they'd have it on Apple music. I could find it. Sure. Or YouTube or I don't (laughs) know, somewhere. I'll definitely look for that. What about something that you've bought in the last year or so that's under a hundred dollars that has like maybe improved the quality of your life? Um, gosh, vitamins. Oh, I, um, okay. yeah, they're, um, what's the name of the company? I do this monthly subscription and it's like pure vitamins. And there's also like this water pill that keeps you more uh, hydrated. Hmm. I would say that's been a really great investment. That's under, well, depends what vitamins you buy, but yeah. around a hundred dollars a month. Interesting. Yeah. Water, a water pill. I think it's called ritual. Ritual. Okay. I've heard of that. I've heard yeah. of that. Yeah. So that they customize what they send you based on like a questionnaire you fill out or is that, is that how that works? No, oh. it's whether, I think it's whether you're, you're a woman or under 18 or something like that, oh, but then, okay. you know, that's a multivitamin, but then there's, they have other vitamins, like if you want extra of something or like a probiotic or something like that. So yeah. I think that's been a game changer just for my health. Yeah. So you've noticed a difference after starting whatever oh, regimen. Definitely. Yeah. Nice. Oh, definitely. And then when I, I remember I ran out for, I don't know how long it was. I could tell hmm. there was definitely a difference. Yeah. Oh, interesting. And then uh, last question, is there a good book that you read or a podcast that you've listened to that you thought might be helpful to the audience and it can be fiction or nonfiction. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot. I mean, I'm really into, as you guys know, like culture and social impact and about growth and improving our own lives. Um, I would say for podcasts, there is, um, there's a lot Esther Pearl. I'm really into, mm-hmm. I'm also very into like the Jay Shetty's, the, uh, mm-hmm. Simon Sinek's, you know, of the world, Gary Vaynerchuk's I'm, I think they do amazing, amazing work. It's a blessing that they're in our world right now. Cause I don't know what we would do without them. Cause they really do understand this world very well. Oh, like Esther Pearl. I think she's very, has great sophistication and about womanhood and leadership. Yeah. Michelle Obama is a no brainer. I mean, she always hits, <laughs> you know, she's, she's excellent. Um, and then books. Oh, I have so many books. Oh, and I should mention uh, Julie Milroy's Served Up podcast. She's a chief and she's just been great empowering API women leaders. And she she really gets into good conversation. I should lift her up. And then as far as books, um, there are so many. And there's a lot of chiefs that have come out with books um, that I would recommend. I actually am reading right now. I just happen to have here from Elise Lonen. She, I actually known her from when I was in the tech industry and then she went to Goop for a while. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's this book called On Our Best Behavior. So it's also about culture and society now and about womanhood. Who was the author again? Who was the author? Uh, uh, Elise Lonen. Elise Lonen, okay. L-O-E-H-N-E-N. 
Okay. Oh, you Great. can't really see it. Yeah, it's hard, it's hard to see it, but we'll, Sorry, we'll make sure we have it in the show notes for, for everybody. Yeah. There's a lot. There's so many. Yeah, right? oh, there and is, I, yeah, of and course. It, and I'm excited because I'm an empty nester now. I can start to read more again. I think there was a period that I just couldn't read or I was getting my master's and I'm reading all business books. So I'm excited yeah. to read more. Awesome. Great. Well, thank you, Mai. You're officially now in our audience as Hype Squad. So is there one oh. piece, one last piece of advice that or inspiration that you would leave the audience with before we um, say goodbye? Have no fear. Hmm. Or if you do have a lot of fear, sometimes obviously we're all human. I, sometimes I have fear is face your fears. Yeah. But be, be fearless in this new world. Like, what are you waiting for? Like, really, what are you waiting for? Yeah. Oh, I love it. That's great advice. Well, how can our listeners reach out to you? If they can, they reach out to you. And if so, how is the best way to get a hold, get in touch with you? I think LinkedIn is probably the easiest way, or you can email me my MAI at my more.com. Probably is the best way. Okay. Perfect. Yes. Well, thank you so much for coming on. I really enjoyed this conversation. It's just one of those, it, it, it's, there are a lot of unknowns for a lot of people that are in leadership positions. And I know it's something that everybody really wants to kind of get a grasp on and, and know how to speak intergenerationally, as you say. So it was, a, it was a great topic to cover. Really appreciate you coming on and sharing what you're doing. And I'm excited to see where Boss Vian goes. Thank you. No, I'm grateful to have been here, Michelle, and for you having me. And it was a great conversation. And I'm, I'm just yeah. grateful that you're doing this. So thank you. Well, thank you. Well, enjoy the rest of your day and I'll talk to you soon. You too. Thank you. Right, bye-bye. <laughs> Hi, everyone. This is Michelle again. If you enjoyed this conversation, hit subscribe so you don't miss out on our weekly episodes. And if you're really feeling it, please leave a review. We'd love to have your support. You can also subscribe to our weekly newsletter where we share things we're excited about, things we found funny or inspiring, and must-read leadership videos and articles we came across that week. You can subscribe by going to www.thebosstrack.com forward slash weekly joy. That's www.thebosstrack.com forward slash weekly joy. Drop in your email and you'll get the very next one. Thanks for listening.